So I watched Elemental, Indiana Jones, and The Flash over the summer. Let's get into it. I watched Elemental, I think, on opening weekend, if I recall correctly. I'm not sure, but I know I watched it in theaters. It was good. It wasn't by any means bad, but it didn't like revolutionize the industry. The thing that baffles me the most is how much money that Pixar spent on the movie. Like that's worth more than my entire extended family. And still the movie came out pretty all right. One problem I had was that I wish we saw more of Wade. He felt very one dimensional and like he kind of fell flat in certain intense moments of the movie. Like the problem was that he was like too perfect in a way. And like he was like too understanding stuff like that, which is great to have in character. But like he had like very little flaws and a few flaws that he had were played off as like quirks instead of, you know, actually things that he needs to work on. Like one conflict oh yeah spoilers by the way like one conflict that uh, wade had between ember was that he wanted ember to follow her passions but it's a noble thing to want your girlfriend to do but still that makes him a bit too perfect because he still wins in the end anyway right like imagine how much better the story could have been if it was wade a rich snob understanding that his newfound girlfriend doesn't have like the same opportunities as him and yet ember could still follow her passions in the end but wade comes out being like a better person the second thing about this movie is that it tries to be pixar's utopia and it obviously isn't but it's not really the movie's fault or like the the plot's fault in general just the fact that there's like not much effort put into like the city overall in terms of like these elements coming together to create this new society right they should have really put more thought into like this world of elements that are trying to build this city that uses their abilities one way or another like why do water people use the train in general right we could just have like giant pipes that just take people you know what i mean like that's that's all you need to do or maybe just have other pipes that suck in wind people and like shoot them out the other side like there's one bit in the movie where like you see wind people like walking into a blimp and like they inflate it it's fine but it's like they're faster than the blimp already like why are they going into a blimp for like what's the point it just felt like there was like no effort put into like the design of this world and like see how all these elements interact together right like have you ever watched the cartoon where it's just animals living in the human world but there's like no humans around like that's kind of how it feels in this movie like also why is it only earth air water water and fire like why can't we have like bismuth or uranium like walking down the streets of fifth avenue you know what i mean like let's have some variety here anyway i recommend it. it's a fun time if you want a simple story to enjoy watch it 7.5 out of 10 the next movie we're going to talk about is the flash yikes I've never been a huge fan of superheroes. I never really got into them as a kid. But as of recently, I've seen more Marvel films like in person in theaters, right? My girlfriend is getting me into DC as well. But I don't think I've seen an actual DCU film like ever besides Joker. But I don't know if that counts. So I was surprised that The Flash never got his own like DCU movie. So I was excited to see the definitive The Flash movie, right? I know my girlfriend was telling me that the flash was supposed to like start like a new universe or like a new multiverse and it did that job but it didn't do anything else like really well except for one thing but i'll get into that it really felt like batman was like the second main character of this film other than like the second barry allen and it just kind of felt like weird i didn't want to see batman i came to see the flash you know what i mean i feel like if they rebranded this movie to like a, a bcu film like batman cinematic universe like people wouldn't complain as much because you know there's a lot of batman in this film though i wasn't comfortable uh supporting ezra miller um he did okay as the flash right he wasn't bad he felt more like a side character that was like given his own movie you know like someone else but i did like the climax where you know it was second ezra miller like going back in time and trying to fix things but he couldn't fix it no matter how hard he tried and he became the villain in his own way which is really neat i did like that ending which was the one good thing that i mentioned before the biggest problem was the cgi it looked horrid it looked like a like a ps2 game basically everyone's been saying that like i say it too i guess so you know here we are overall i wish we had more of the flash in this movie because batman really took the show or like took the focus in some points 5.5 5 out of 10. indiana jones the dial of destiny it was cool the story was fine. It reminded me of like the Jumanji reboot in 2017, Journey to the Center of the Earth, its sequel, and like a hint of Jurassic World Dominion. They used CGI to make Harrison Ford look younger in certain scenes. It wasn't bad, but it didn't look good. It was more like a video game cutscene, which it reminded me of a lot of actually. Like if you've seen The Last of Us 2, you know what I'm talking about. It's like that good at this point, right? And yeah, it wasn't a glaring issue with the film. Like the story was fine overall, I guess. But that's just like one thing I wanted to point out. I've also never seen an Indiana Jones movie before. And as like a first time viewer of Indiana Jones, I wasn't like lost. I, I was like perfectly caught up on everything, I guess. I mean, there wasn't much to catch up on. It was just an old adventurer, like living out his last days as like a history teacher. One thing that told me there was like an uh, old reference coming up, like someone from the past came back in this movie was that during the theater showing, I was sitting next to two old ladies that would react to certain things. So when someone came on screen, they were like, oh, look, it's he's, it's, he's here. And then that guy died. And then they were like all sad. 
sorry. It was kind of funny though. The one thing that kind of caught me off guard was like the Nazi plot line. I was expecting more of like a, oh, this is Indiana Jones' last adventure. It'll be like a villain or like a thing that is like really personal to him. But no, it was just Nazis. But I did enjoy the twist at the end. So if you're gonna watch the movie, there's a twist at the end. Also, I know they give a reason as to why the kid is there, but he just doesn't do anything in this film like why why does he matter if you don't know what i'm talking about like there's like this one kid i guess that tags along like halfway in, into the movie and he just like joins the group and he doesn't do anything other than like, get captured and then like help like fly a plane at the end like he just adds nothing to the film like emotionally like mentally i guess i don't know like the story is that like him and one of the main characters has like known each other for a while now and so like he just kind of tags along with her but it's like he doesn't he doesn't do anything like what what's the point of bringing him along in this adventure if he doesn't do anything also another nitpick for this movie is that the main antagonist is like a nazi and he has like a group of goons that you know help him out in his evil endeavors right one of his goons is a black woman and i have no problem with that the problem is did we forget the time period that this movie takes place in and like the villain is an actual nazi did we forget what nazis want to do why is he employing a black woman that doesn't make sense that doesn't make sense in this time period overall eight out of ten um good for good fun for the whole family yep bye Good video.